when we're on, on draft night and we're sitting there waiting to find out, hopefully. When you say we, does that mean we're going with we, you? We, no. Oh. We collectively as an NFL-loving nation, um, we, we'll, we'll be hopefully still wondering who the Panthers are going to take. And then there's the Texans sitting there, too. And then instead of one. And then there's the Colts sitting at four as opposed to one would think, what they finished four and twelve and one. Uh, if they had finished five eleven and one, they'd be sitting there uh, down at seven. Okay, Seattle would have wound up fourth. And the reason why I'm mentioning this: a fourth and twenty in Tech in Houston, down seven. Uh, not in Houston, they were down seven against Indianapolis and won that game, and it changed everything. Bears go to number one, Texans drop to two, Colts move up to four. And I'm just sitting here thinking on draft night, if we're still thinking about that moment in week 18, I think we will be. We'll be talking about that depending on who the Carolina takes and who the Bears take and who, who Houston winds up with. We'll be talking about that for a long time because boy, did that change a ton of fortunes. Mm -hmm. And then Indianapolis wound up four as opposed to all the way down at seven and if they get the quarterback that they want but man do they appear to be in a tough spot because they didn't move up to one and I'm wondering if Ryan Poles called Chris Ballard at any point in time said hey man I got this deal from Carolina you want to match it and he's got to be like for three spots I'll give you a little bit less than what Carolina's offering you for three spots and then you still get a terrific player at four. Yeah, I'm, I don't think that's that's going to happen. And now they're sitting there at four. And the team that just keeps on seemingly losing out at the quarterback spot ever since Andrew Luck says, I'm out. They keep trying to fill that spot year after year after year. They're trying to put sandbags on the situation and 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 they keep getting overrun at the quarterback spot, they're sitting there at four. And if Stroud, and I think you can assume Stroud and Young, gone, see ya. Can you get Anthony Richardson at four as we're sitting here on March 13th? I don't think you can say that because I think somebody's going to flip up to Arizona. If your quarterback hopes and plans are dependent on Arizona not trading out of three, falling in love with Will Anderson, Jalen Carter clears his name. If you're banking on that after what you just saw, that's too much of a risk. It's too risky. Do you trade something to get up to three so you know you get somebody named Richardson, Young, or Stroud? That you're fine with any of them? And your evaluation of Richardson, Stroud, or Young is like it's worth it? And again, I think it's Richardson who's going to be the third man out. As of right now, I don't know. His pro day will probably be like a Christmas tree, all lit up. But so will Stroud's, and so will Young's. And then those guys will go on visits, and they'll impress again. Here's the question I have for you for the Indianapolis Colts. If you know you're spending your fourth round, your fourth overall pick on a quarterback, and it could be either Richardson or Levis. And let's just say it's Richardson. Let's just throw it out there. And you got a six foot four quarterback who can run four four and throw it a mile. And he starts at the rookie salary scale of whatever it is. And you got him for five years. That's in one hand. The other hand is you take that fourth round selection and your first next year and you go visit Lamar Jackson. And you say, well, what's up? What's up? Nice 90. What's that? On Wednesday <laughs> when you're allowed to talk to him. What's up? What's the number? How you doing? How are you, Lamar? What's your number? 
and do you like shrimp cocktail? <laughs> yes. Do you like you like race cars? Anything? Do you like Miles Turner? Do you like? Uh, <laughs> do you like basketball? Do you like Miles. Turner? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah, do you like Halliburton? <laughs> I, I I I don't I don't know. Cool. Why you don't kick that tire other than the fact you want you don't want to pay him all that money and or do the Ravens work for them. Once again, the Ravens have a right to match. And if you get him to agree to anything less than what he demanded from the Ravens, the Ravens might just jump on your paperwork from your legal staff and all the hard work you did with Team Lamar and and everyone else that you just handed the Ravens a gift. You got to sit. That's what the Bears-Panthers trade brought into play, in my mind, for Indianapolis. There is a former most valuable player sitting there waiting for the new league year to begin on Wednesday to see who is interested in finding out from me what I want, rather than hearing the rumors, rather than hearing the reports, hear it directly from me what I want and I'm looking for. Again, problem for Lamar is he's really expensive. It costs two firsts. Also, he hasn't finished the last two seasons. There's questions as to why. There's also a dynamic about his business and the way he handles it that is totally unique with no agent. Teams can get thrown off by that. This is, this is the facts of, of the world for him. The contract that he wants, reportedly, a dollar more or exactly the same as Deshaun Watson lasted all of one year before the Browns needed Deshaun to redo it, as they did today. They reconfigured his contract. I don't have the capology all broken down. I'm sure they're putting stuff into the future, the converting the signing bonuses or whatever. My head spins. But all I know is the simple contract of five years, everything's guaranteed up to 230 million bucks. That now has an addendum. There's new paperwork. And contracts get redone every year by quarterbacks to save cap money. You get it done for the moment. So everybody's in the building. Everybody gets signed. And runway is built for a long-term future. And then you start redoing it. Put it on the credit card. And you start doing this and that. It happens all the time. But the whole contract that you're looking for, you're going to end up having to redo it. Does the team want to go through all that? I mean, I know they do it all the time. If you're Indianapolis and you're wondering, do I get the guy I want? Do we actually walk out of here with no quarterback because we're not interested in one of the four and that's the one that will most likely drop to us? Could the Colts legitimately walk out of the first round of this year's draft with no quarterbacks? Are they prepared to do that? That would be bad business. I don't know. Would it? Would it? Because... We can take Hendon Hooker in the second or third round. Could. Wait for him to get healthy. Why not? Sign another veteran. Why not? Again. Why not? The road that hasn't worked. Or do you take the swing for the fence... And call up Lamar Jackson first thing on Wednesday. Because you're already going to use your first on a quarterback that you don't know a thing about. So you might as well just throw another first on the fire. Sign him. Could you know how many eight jerseys they could print up on the spot in Indianapolis? And that's a fan base that loves wearing jerseys. They are the number one jersey-wearing fan base I've ever seen yeah. in any sport. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.